Hi, I'm Ben Orford, and we're down in amongst the willows today, and we thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to show you how to make a simple woodsman's whistle. Now, willow is probably the most ideal material for this because we're looking for a nice, clean, straight stems, and we want to be able to take the bark off it. So willow is perfect for that job. It's also great because it's very quick growing, and whatever we cut will regrow really quickly. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a stem that's about as thick as our little finger, something like that. So this doesn't look too bad. It's not got too many side branches on it and not very many knots. We're also doing the tree a little bit of benefit as well because it's sort of growing round the branch here. So it's not a particularly good stem anyway. So what we'll do is we'll take our knife out and because we're cutting quite thin material, a knife is perfect for the job. We don't need to use a saw. So if you are cutting branches with a knife, the best technique to use is to actually put a little bit of tension on that stem itself and then place the knife at a good slicing angle, good 45 degrees, and then as I put the tension on, slice through. Now, because we're sort of applying pressure, it has a tendency to leave this stem cut cleanly and it tends to put a few little splits in this stem. So as part of the sort of respect and the sort of good woodsman practice, what I like to do is always trim this off as close to the stem as possible and what we're going to do is, now that our hands are well out of the way, we can make a nice diagonal slice upwards and it will leave a nice clean stem. Now if we leave a nice clean stem, this will allow the tree to heal quickly and it will also throw out new side shoots as well, so we're going to get more whistles in the future. And because we only need this section of the timber itself, what we can do is we can trim off any side branches and we can trim off all these leaves. And again, so that we sort of manage in the woodland as best as we can, the bit that we don't need, which is this end bit, we can cut that off and then we can stick that in the ground. So it needs to go in the ground a good three, four inches. And then this itself will root and grow into another willow. So now that we've got the piece of wood that we want, we'll be ready to start making our whistle and we'll show you a few of the first few cuts. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to check the stem and we want to try and choose the cleanest part that we can. So there's a little side branch here that I'm going to try and avoid. So I'm going to get rid of that material. So again, when you're making any cuts, a good forehand grip and a good 45 degree angle so that it slices nicely. Still got that little side branch, so we'll cut a little bit further back. And a little bit more. Okay, so now we're into this clean section of timber here. Now, this is going to be the mouthpiece of our whistle. So what I want to try and do is avoid this sharp end. So what I like to do is just come back across with the knife just to blunt in that end. Because like I say, that's the bit that's going to actually go in our mouth. Now that we've done that, what we want to do is come back about a centimetre and we're going to put a little V-notch in there. Now the V-notch is going to be the area where the actual the, the air that we blow into the whistle will actually come out. And that's the bit that makes the noise. So we'll come back about a centimetre along the longest side, so not on this sloping edge, but on this top side, about a centimetre, and we're just going to put a little V-notch in there. Now, we're pushing back towards our thumb, but my thumb is well behind the piece of wood, so it's a nice safe stance. Come another slope, so we're creating just a little V, just like so. Now, it doesn't need to be too deep. It only needs to be a couple of mil deep, but we want to make sure that it's nice, and crisp and sharp and you've got no raggedy edges there. Then what we want to do is we want to come down about four centimeters down the stem itself and we're going to put a score mark. Now the score mark is going to enable us to actually remove the bark from the piece of wood. So we can finish scoring all the way around, again making sure that that thumb stays well behind the stem. Now at that stage you can put your knife away. At this time of the year it's not ideal. It's a little bit late in the season and the sap is not flowing anywhere near as strongly as it would do in the spring. That initial flush of green leaves that you get in the springtime when the sap's really flowing, that's the easiest time to make whistles because the, the bark will just pop off. Now, at that stage, if you think that it's going to be a little bit dry or you've got a few extra side branches or even a knot, the easiest way to try and remove that bark is to either use the handle of your knife or a piece of scrap timber and what we're going to do is we're going to apply a little bit of pressure. We're going to tap on the outside of that bark. 
And this is hopefully going to help sort of break that seal between the bark and the actual stem itself. Now, if you've got any side branches or any knots, just concentrate a little bit more on those areas and be a little bit careful where you've got that V in there because there's a tendency for the bark to want to split at that point. Tap all the way around. Now, if you're trying to make lots of whistles and it's getting late in the year, you can always soak that stem, either in a bucket of water overnight or in a stream, and that will help rehydrate that bark. So now that we've scored all the way around and we've tapped the bark, we can grip it in our hand and twisting, we should be able to make that bark crack and come off the stem. So you should feel it just start to move under your hand. And I can feel that the bark is actually separated now from the stem. So still being really careful, twist it because we don't want this bark to split. So carefully remove it from the stem and you can start to see the white inner wood appearing and that should pull off just like that. So we've now got a little tube of bark. Now we need to keep that safe. So what I'll do is I'll pop that in my pocket while I'm making these extra cuts. So we've still got that mark where our first initial little V slot is. So that's gonna be one of the parts of the cut. And then we need to come back down the stem a little bit as well. So with our knife, we're gonna to start to make those first few cuts. What I like to do is make that initial cut on the sort of the top side, the, the side closest to the mouthpiece, we're gonna make that cut a little bit deeper. We still follow on at that sort of 45 degrees. Now be really careful at that stage because we're still using our thumb as an anvil and the tendency is that the knife will come too far through and then you'll end up cutting your thumb. So I'm not pushing that hard, I'm just rocking the blade just to sever the fibres. Then what I want to do is I want to come down the stem leaving about a centimetre beyond where we've scored the bark. So I'm coming in a centimetre and I'm going to make another 45 degree slope aiming back towards our mouthpiece. Then what we can do is we can actually use the grain to our advantage. I'm gonna get my knife blade in there and I'm actually gonna apply a little bit of pressure and it's actually gonna almost split the wood off. Now I need to be really careful that that split doesn't travel too far and break off the, the mouthpiece. So you can see how it just breaks away like so. So take your time, make a few cuts and if you need to, if you start to see that split getting too deep and potentially gonna wreck the top end of your whistle, just go back and just continue those little stop cuts. Now, willow has a tendency to be a little bit fluffy when you're carving it. It's not the, uh, the nicest wood to carve. It tends to be a little bit woolly. So what we wanna try and do is really concentrate on getting really crisp cuts. If you leave any sort of raggedy bits and fluff in our whistle, it's actually gonna stop it working. So I'm just carefully working back and forth, cleaning up that grain. <clears throat> now thickness wise, I normally use the pith as my guide. So halfway through this stem is the pith. So we need to get to the pith and then just go a little bit beyond and try and make it as even as possible. So take your time with it, don't rush it because it's a shame if you make too much of a rush job and then you end up ruining all that preparation so far. So you should have this funny little notch missing away from our whistle now. And the next cut is probably the most important cut. Now that's gonna be the bit that allows the air to come in from the mouthpiece into this chamber. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back down about a centimeter off that slope and we're gonna aim our cut all the way along. So we'll just make sure that we don't go too deep and we're gonna take a little bit of the time because it's always easier to take more material off than stick it back on. So now what we've created is this gap uh, so that it'll allow us to blow here, the air will come down off that sharp edge into the chamber and back out again. So what we'll do is we'll put our knife away and then we'll see if we've not lost that bit of bark. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna carefully slide it back onto our whistle and it will be quite a tight fit because effectively it could have even shrunk in that short space of time so just ease it over 
all those sharp edges and then we can give it a test run and see if it works. So let's see. So it works. Now, it doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes you need to take the bark off. You might need to clean up, clean up any of that sort of wooliness in your chamber. Normally, the most common failure with the whistle is that that cut isn't deep enough. There's not enough air coming in there, but that seems to work pretty good. You can, if you want to, when you get the hang of it, make it slightly more elaborate by just cutting all the way through on that diagonal cut. So you've just got a mouthpiece and then actually cutting another longer piece of wood that can slide in and out and you can make one of those whistles that changes pitch. This is a great little sort of thing to show people how to do when you're out for a walk. It only takes a few minutes of time to make and as long as you've got a simple blade, it can't be a very thick blade because you'll struggle to get in to do those cuts, but a simple little pocket knife will work a treat. Now, as this dries out, which it will do because it will lose a lot of moisture now, it will start to shrivel up now, you might think that once it dries up, it stops working. Well, it, it does effectively, but it doesn't mean that you have to throw it away. There is an expression that we use saying, we've got to wet our whistle. Now, people think of it as being thirsty. You've got to go and have a wet your whistle. But that actually comes from this. When your whistle dries out, it stops working. But normally, just a little bit of spit, a little bit of saliva, or even a little bit of water from your flask, or even from a running stream. That's normally enough to hydrate this whistle and get it working again. So there you go, a simple wooden woodsman's whistle. You only have to carry your tools and your knowledge and obviously a little bit of tree ID. But if you've got any questions or you need any information about any of our tools or products, please drop us an email through the website and hope you enjoy it.